Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Today, we're going to be ranchers in Argentina, growing our lands and expanding our herds in Hacienda. This here is a fairly recent reprint of a game by the same title that came out in 2005. And this is uh, going to add a couple of variants, change a couple of small things, but largely it's a straight reprint of that game from 2005. So if you are familiar with it, you will be familiar with this and the small couple of variants uh, in it, um, I'm not really gonna dive into too much. So I don't know how valuable this review will be for you. But if you're not aware of the game, if you've never heard of the original game, you're curious about this now, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. I'm going to show you how the game works uh, briefly, then we'll come on back after that and I'll tell you my thoughts on this game. Here we're taking a look at a game already in progress between two players playing green, blue, and red. I'm going to be showing you the possibilities that the player, the next player, which would be uh, blue in this case, has on their turn and I'm going to be explaining how scoring works. In fact, we'll start there so that you have an idea of what the players are doing and why they're doing it. Everybody's gonna have one of these player aids, so let's go ahead and jump to scoring first so that you understand what's going on. There are a few mistakes and typos on here. Uh, I'll just talk about that later, it is kind of an issue. But let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so markets is the first thing. Uh, you're gonna be scoring twice in the game, by the way, when the animals run out here. You put the secondary deck, you split the deck into two halves, you put the second deck in, in place there, and then you score again at the end of that deck. So twice in the game. So the first thing is the markets. These are the markets in play, and players are trying to connect their herds of animals to them. Based on how many of them you've connected, you are going to score a number of victory points. They don't have to be connected to each other, you just have to uh, reach them, okay? So if these uh, things weren't here, if this wasn't here, he, this player still connects these to these three. They don't have to be connected to one another. Next up, the land tiles. There's a mistake there, it says lang, but anyway, land tiles. For every group of land tiles you have that is at least three tiles, you are going to score two points per. Two, four, six, eight, ten for red in this case. Next up, water tiles. For being around water tiles, we begin with a few, but every tile around a water tile is going to get you a point per tile. And there are more that can make it onto the board later on. So in this case, blue would get from this one, one, two, three, and we have one up here where green's getting one, two, three, four. Either tile type works. It can be land, it can be herds. Uh, next up, the haciendas, which are these. Players can pay to put these into uh, into play, and uh, you are going to be scoring one point per tile in its group. It could be on animals, it could be on land. So in this case, one, two, three, four points for blue there, or here, five for red. And then lastly, money, you're going to get one point for every ten pesos you have left. So there you go, that is scoring. Let's talk about the possibilities you have on your turn. The first thing you can do is you can buy a card. It can be an animal card, it can be a land card. If it's open, it costs you three pesos. If it's uh, undisclosed, you're gonna pay two, because you don't know what you're getting. So on uh, Blue's turn here, they could spend uh, three pesos and buy, let's see, let me take a look at actually what, what Blue's got going on. So yeah, Blue's gonna pay three pesos, like so, and buy this card right here, and then we replenish it, all right? So that's the first option, buy a card. Second thing, you can play a card. Play a land card. Blue's gonna play this card, they're gonna discard it, and they're gonna put one of these tiles in its matching spot. In this case, right there. All right, they put it anywhere they want to. It could go here, which might be a better idea. It could go, again, anywhere you want, as long as it's on one of these matching uh, locations. Now, the, the, the other ones, the Pampas, which are these that kind of look uh, desolate, those, you cannot play one of those and just put it anywhere. Those, when you play them, it has to go next to a tile of yours already. So for me to populate this space, I would have had to do something like this first, okay? So play a card uh, for land or play an animal. Playing an animal is largely the same thing. You're gonna 
play the matching animal card there, in this case a horse for blue. You grab your tile that shows a horse, and you have to put it next to one of your land tiles or next to a horse. In this case, I would have to put it somewhere next to one of my land types. I have no horses. This might be a good idea. That now makes me adjacent to that um, market. All right. Or I could put it maybe here, making me adjacent to that market. Either way. So there you go. That's playing a card, land, and animal. Next up, um, you are going to have three other options that you can only do once per turn. The other ones you can do as many times as you want per turn, and you have on your turn three actions. So I could buy, buy, buy. Or I could buy one of these and then play two cards, okay? Uh, the next three you can only do once per turn, and they are buy a water tile. You pay 12 pesos, you take any one of these water tiles, you put it into play. And you're going to score, like I said, at the end of the game. Now, you buying this does not prevent other people from being around it, and they'll score off of it too. Next up, you can uh, buy an hacienda. 12 pesos as well, you put it on a group of tiles. And you're going to score, like I said, at the end of the game. Per group, you can only have one hacienda. If you have another group that has an hacienda and somehow they connect throughout the game, you've wasted one of those two because you'll only score that group once. And then lastly, you can harvest. You can use one of these harvest tiles, put it on a group of land, like so, and you're going to make three pesos per tile. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's 21 pesos. And now once you have one there, you can not harvest that again unless all the tiles run out, they're all in place somewhere, and you and someone removes this one to harvest something else, then you could move another one somewhere back in here and harvest that again. Uh, be aware that it, placing the tile is what makes you money. Once it's there, growing the group doesn't automatically make you money. All right? So there you go. That is what you are doing in the game. Uh, managing your money, managing the cards you buy, the groups you make, trying to connect to as many of these marks as possible, trying to surround water whenever you can, and making groups of land tiles at least three large so that you can score them. All right? That's pretty much the game. Score twice in the game, like I said, and uh, you've got yourself a winner. So there you go. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I should mention, I forget if I mentioned it, that the game comes with four boards. So there's another side to this one, and there is another board which itself has two sides. So there are four boards in this. But again, uh, that's enough, I think. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so that is Hacienda. You know, there are a lot of games uh, from around this time period, say between 2000 and 2005, that are being reprinted lately. You know, there's quite a few of those, whether it's through Kickstarter or just a straight up reprint. And a lot of the times they're fantastic reprints. They are games that deserved to be back in print. The production is very nice. They're well handled. They have a splashy new look, all of those things. For So I, I would say on average, I'm very happy with those things. This one, I'm not as thrilled with. Uh, for one thing, it's not the it's not a game that I think it you know leaps out at me when I think of games from around this time period that need to come back into print. So there is that, um, and it's also got a few issues with this production that are unfortunate. So let's go ahead and talk about this. All right, I'm going to start with um, the things that are good. I'll end with the things I didn't like. Uh, the replay value here is good. So if you're aware of the original game, or even if you're not, this one has a solid replay value. You get four maps now. You have a couple of variants at least in the box. You have a, a few different ways you can mix up the experience. Um, they have one way in which you can play for two players specifically on one of the maps. Uh, changing a few of the rules, changing a few of the things you score for. So that's nice. The replayability, assuming you like the game, is there. Uh, things I feel just okay about the aesthetics here are pretty good. You know, uh, the, the the look of everything is nice. I think the card quality is decent. It's not spectacular, but it's decent. Tokens are fine. Uh, I don't dislike anything about the production here necessarily. The tiles are a little on the small side, so they, they leave a solid amount of area on the board as you are placing them so that the inner hex is quite small compared to where it sits. It's not a big deal. It just takes a little getting used to for me. 
and it prevents you from, I guess, knocking a bunch of them around. And then the game arc also, I wouldn't say it's bad, but I wouldn't say it's fantastic. The build in the game, there's some nice turn angst where you see the scoring coming, you want to get to a certain point right before that scoring happens. So those moments are nice, but that's a few minutes twice in the game in a game that's about an hour. So for the most part, the build, the, the interest, the excitement is fairly flat, okay? Things that did not like in the game. Um, oh, I forgot to talk about tactics and strategy. I'm sorry, tactics, strategy, luck. It's not very engaging, it's not very exciting, but it is there. And I, I would be wrong to say there isn't. there are no tactics, no things to react to, nothing interest to do. No place to cut people off or grow your own your own interests. There are things to think about, so that's that's good. Now, a couple of things I don't like here: the theme is not exciting, and not just that, but it gets in the way of teaching. I think it is it it's contrary to th to the to a theme that is just paste uh, you know plastered on or pasted on. Uh, I don't like a theme that is that when I explain a rule the idea of what you're doing goes against that, right? The idea of you build an hacienda. You can put it on your land, which makes sense. You're growing your land and you can put a house, you know, your farm on it. You can also put a farm on a group of animals, on the herd. Doesn't really make sense, but you can do that. Uh, when you connect a herd to a market, you score the herd plus the land connected to it. Which, again, I'm not sure why you score both, but you can do that. If you connect a herd and it's connected to multiple groups of land, you score them too, as I found out when I looked it up online. Because the other thing is the ease of play here is terrible. The reason being, the rule book, the player aids are riddled with um, not just typos, which, you know, is, is lame and I don't like it and I wish more people would have looked at, more people would have put their eyes on this and caught all those things, but they don't technically stop you from playing. But there are a bunch of rules mistakes. There are inconsistencies between this player aid and the rule book. Things like when you buy a land or animal card, if you buy it open, it's three pesos. If you buy clothes, it's two. Well, in the rule book, it says if you buy it open, it's two pesos. If you buy it closed, it's one. That's wrong. This is right, as per the rules in the original printing. This also says when you score the chain of animals when it reaches a market, you do land tiles times number of animal tokens. That's wrong. It's plus. That rule is a variant in the rule book, which is in the player aid, the only player aid. And so on and so on. There's also land tiles here called Lang tiles, uh, as in Eric Lang's last name. That gave me a chuckle. But anyway, um, there's a lot of mistakes. A game that feels, this production ultimately feels sloppy. On top of the fact that I don't think this is a game that was screaming to get reprinted, okay? So I'm not super thrilled with this one. I thought it was a weird choice to come back. Uh, and I thought that it was... It could have been better handled. So this is going to get from me as a bottom line, a 5 out of 5. I mean, a 5.5 .5 out of 10. So 5.5 out of 10 is basically an average score. If you are a big Wolfgang Kramer fan uh, and you're a complete a completionist, then this would be a good one for you. Be aware there are mistakes. Look up the fixes online. Read the rulebook for the original edition for the first printing. Uh, which is, again, not something you should do in this day and age, right? But you're going to have to. And then you'll be fine. You'll enjoy the game. I think there are so many better games from this time period, from this designer, uh, and from this company. And I'll give you a suggestion, okay, for each. If you want something more interesting from this designer that's around, that feels kind of like this, I would recommend Mexica. That got a reprint, a spectacular reprint, okay? Check that out. If you want something similar to this from the time period that this came in, uh, came out in, I would recommend you check out Attica, which was reprinted as U.S. Telegraph. A loving uh, 
production. Very nicely done, beautiful, you know, smooth play, wonderful. That came out in 2003. The reprint, of, co of course, is much more recent. And then if you want something interesting from this company that I think is very similar to this and a better game, I would recommend Maya from the same uh, publisher from White, uh, White Goblin Games. That's a wonderful tile laying game. Very smooth, very modern. Uh, does a lot with very few rules as opposed to this. Has a lot of little rules. So there you go. Those are my recommendations for you. 5.5 out of 10 from me for Hacienda. That's gonna do it, everybody. This uh, has been Hacienda. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one.